Well, we'll uh, go ahead and get started this morning. And so if you have your Bibles, uh, would you turn to Matthew 22 with me? Or uh, Matthew 15, rather. Matthew 15 and verse 22. And uh, while you're turning there, I'll uh, go ahead and say a happy Mother's Day to uh, all of the mothers who are here or who uh, were not able to make it here. Uh, and I just want to thank you for your service in the Lord uh, that you've done for him. And this morning we'll be uh, looking at in the scripture uh, what a godly mother is. Uh, what does it mean to be a uh, godly mother? Uh, what does the scripture show us about them? And uh, we have an example of a, a very godly mother in Matthew 15 this morning. And so if you have your Bibles there in Matthew 15, as I said, we'll begin reading in verse 22 together. The scripture says, Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, uh, and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made hold, uh, whole from that very hour. And so let's go to our Lord in prayer now. Father God, we come before you, Lord, again, and we thank you for your word. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the examples that it gives to us. And Lord, we pray that we would all get something out of uh, reading about the example of this woman and, and how Jesus was merciful to her. Uh, Lord, we pray that where we've sinned against you again, that you would forgive us. Uh, Lord, that you would prepare our hearts to hear your word and that you would uh, make it applicable to our lives by your Holy Ghost. And Lord, again, we ask that you would be with those who can make it here this morning. And all this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, this morning we're asking, what is a godly mother? And the first thing we want to see in this passage about this mother is that there are no perfect mothers. There are no perfect mothers in the world. This woman was not sinless. She was a, a sinner just like everyone, just like every mother is, just like of course, all the human race is. In verse 26, But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And now this, though this statement uh, that Jesus is making, uh, it's a statement about her geographical home where she lived at, that she did not live on the table of Israel, but she was a Syrophoenician woman. She was a Canaanite. Uh, and uh, so she... Uh, she was literally not at the children's table. She, she, was, uh, she was, as it were, a dog who was off to the side. And so Christ, at that time, only being sent to the, to the lost sheep of Israel, uh, he went only to the table and, and ministered there. But this can also be taken and, and understood that Christ spoke of her human nature. That, that she was a sinner just like every other human being sans Christ himself. In Proverbs 26.1, we read, As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. And in Second Peter, we read an interpretation of this, that, uh, that a, a sinner, that a wicked person, always returns to their wickedness. This woman was a sinner just like everyone else. Uh, she was born into sin. She continued in sin. Uh, and so she was a sinner. 
In Psalm 1423, the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. And so when Jesus is, says, it's not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs, he, he means not only that it was outside of uh, his ministry to go to Syrophoenicia, but also uh, that uh, that she was a sinner, uh, that it was not meet for her to receive good things from the Lord. She was undeserving, as we all are. From the very first mother in the Garden of Eden, we see that mothers have been sinners. In Genesis 3, 6, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant and to be desired, she took of the tree and ate and gave to her husband also. The first mother, the mother of all the living, was a sinner. And so all mothers after her were sinners. Even the blessed mother of Christ was, contrary to the Roman Catholic, a sinner. Uh, contrary to what they say, she was a sinner. In John 2 verse 3, When they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. The mother of Christ, when she saw that they had run out of drink, and she wanted to have some um, some part to play in the glory of a miracle work by Jesus, she came to him and, and she wanted to save the party. But Jesus answered, and his answer is very telling, what have I to do with thee? What, what does my glory have to do with you? What does my authority have to do with Mary? She committed the sin of trying to steal glory away from God in Christ. And so all mothers... Uh, throughout all the world, uh, every mother that we look at in the scripture, every mother that we meet in the world is a sinner, just as this Canaanite woman was. And so she was undeserving. She was undeserving of God's mercy toward her. But this brings us to the, uh, the, the, the first attribute of a godly woman, that she has faith, that she trusts in the Lord. In verse 25, then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. She recognized her unworthiness. She didn't dispute being called a dog here, that she was unworthy as we all are unworthy. And yet she came back with an answer of faith. Even the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Just as um, all humanity has sinned and is unworthy, it's not about whether we are worthy when we come to Christ, but whether God is merciful, whether he's benevolent. This is what the woman latched on to, that even the master feeds his dogs, that even the master is benevolent to his animal. And so God is benevolent towards his people. In Romans 5, 8, God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Do not look on your own unworthiness when you consider your standing before God, but consider that God is merciful. Consider that he helps those that trust in him. He forgives those that believe on his son. Faith is the core of godly living for all of mankind, and here we see particularly for this mother that she believed in Christ's mercy. Hebrews 11:6. Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That he's benevolent, he loves his people. Consider again the two other mothers we looked at earlier. 
when we look at Eve's life, we saw that she was uh, uh, a faith, or that she, she, she had faith towards God and his, and his benevolence. In Genesis 4.25, after uh, Cain, her son, had sl- uh, slain Abel, her other son, and God visited her, it says that Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Uh, She recognized God's mercy, that even though Abel, the faithful son, had died, yet God had appointed her another faithful seed. And she was hearkening back to the promise in Genesis 3 against the serpent, that I will put enmity between thy seed and her seed, Thou, uh, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Uh, she was trusting in the Lord that, that God had given this as a promise to her, and so she named her child Seth, which means appointed. Uh, Mary also, the mother of Christ. Of course, we know that she had faith, even though she was, again, a sinner. In Luke 1, uh, 46, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Uh, Of course, those who are not sinners do not need a Savior. Mary recognized that she was a sinner, and yet she recognized the mercy of God and trusted in Him. And so, at the core of godliness, what makes a godly mother is faithfulness always looking to the Lord, and always bringing her family to look to the Lord. The second thing we see also in this is that a godly mother is not only uh, full of faith towards God, but nurture towards her family. In verse 22, we read, Behold, a woman of Canaan came out to, uh, of the same coast and cried him uh, unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. And he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he said, uh, answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. See the care that she had for her daughter, for her family. She came at first, and she she cried out and asked the Lord to help her. Her daughter was vexed. Her daughter was uh, sick, was with a devil, and she cried after him. Jesus, he didn't uh, at first react. He he continued on his way, and and even his disciples came and and began to to press at Christ and say to to send her away. Uh, But she still came the second time. She she came to him where he was at, and she said, Lord, help me. This was out of care for her daughter. She would not leave until her daughter had been helped. You know that this is out of a right motherly love that she had for her children. There are many women today who uh, do not care for their children in this way, Uh, who would rather deliver their children up to die than to uh, nurture them as this woman did. But a godly woman loves her children, cares for her children. In Proverbs 31, verse 2, we we can read several statements uh, about uh, the love of a mother towards her children, uh, towards the charge that God has given to her. What my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows. In Isaiah forty nine fifteen, Can a woman forget her suckling child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Of course, some women do not, but a, right, a righteous woman, a godly woman, will have compassion on her children. In Luke 1, 24, After those days his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus saith the Lord, uh, thus 
hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. The, uh, the godly mother recognizes that her children are a gift from the Lord. And so her faith towards God, her love towards God, goes down into her love towards her children. Uh, she recognizes they're from his hand, that they've been given to her to nurture, to take care of, and so she does take care of them. And so, uh, though I've been uh, brief to this point, uh, the two elements that we've seen that makes a godly mother of children uh, is that she has faith and that that faith drives nurture towards her children uh, to, to, to bring them to Christ, to, to uh, display her faith before them, uh, to care for all of their ways, uh, to look after their health. And in this, a godly woman is known. Now, I'd like us to finally see in our passage that godliness is profitable in all things to a godly mother. In verse 28, when Jesus, then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. The godliness of this mother ended in the good of her household. Her daughter was spared. Her daughter was saved. She received her petition from the Lord. This, of course, applies to mothers in our day also. In uh, evangelism towards our household, God often uses the conversation of godly mothers to achieve his will, to, uh, to, to bring a household to the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 7.13, The woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. That is, by seeing the conversation of your life, uh, of, of the, the life of a godly mother, the household may be brought to faith in Christ. And it's not only profitable in the home to be godly as a mother, but also outside the home. As it says in 1 Timothy 4, 7, Refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. Uh, the uh, godly woman who has children and lives godly in her home will not only reap the benefits inside the house, but outside as well. In all of life, she will be blessed. And so with that this morning, believers, I'd first like to, to speak to the believing mothers that are here. I would first encourage you to press on in godliness, knowing that your labor is not in vain, that it is profitable, that it is good, just as it led to the salvation of this woman's daughter as to the flesh, it may lead to the salvation of your household as to the spirit. In 1 Peter 3, 6, it says, Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. You, you can be the daughters of Sarah. Uh, that is, you can be like your mother. You can be the, the mother of a great nation by your children. So long as you do well, that is, you live godly, and are not afraid with any amazement. That is, if you come by faith, not by fear towards God. You come uh, not looking at your unworthiness, but looking at the mercy of God towards you, not being afraid with any amazement before Him. That in, in this use, the word amazement doesn't mean as in awe, but it means uh, to be... Uh, uh, to, to be um, uh, disquieted 
uh, in in a in an, uh, uh, a disheartening kind of way. And so, uh, to believing mothers, again, I would just encourage you to continue and press on in godliness. And now, for the rest of us believers here, I would not leave us without something to take home ourselves. Uh, for us men, for uh, 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 any uh, women that are uh, listening to this broadcast who are not mothers, uh, I would uh, just admonish us to give thanks to God for the godly mothers in our lives. God has worked mightily in his church through the mothers in that church. Know that God has placed your mothers there for a reason, for your good, that you might, uh, that he might give you grace by them to persevere in holiness. And I'd also like you to take the same standard of faith that we've seen this morning, that, that godliness is not only profitable to mothers, but it's profitable to all of us. It, it's, it's profitable in all of our lives to be holy through faith and through uh, fulfilling the vocation that God has given us in this life. And now finally, if there's any unbeliever that listens to this, uh, that's in the sound of my voice this morning, I would just like to say <clears throat> that just as this mother confessed about herself in our passage, that you are unworthy to stand before God. You are unworthy even of the crumbs that fall from the master's table because of your sin. Psalm 14, 2 says, The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. You are even worthy of not eternal blessing, but eternal cursing from the face of God. 2 Thessalonians 1 7 says, When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be uh, punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. This is what you are worthy of without the Lord. And so just as this woman did in our passage, I would simply call on you to fall on God's mercy. Come by faith in his goodness towards you, not by fear of your unworthiness. He is able to forgive you in Jesus. Therefore, come to him. Isaiah 118 says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And so I pray that you would come to the Lord uh, Jesus Christ, trusting only in his blood, his goodness towards you, so that you would be forgiven. And again, believers, let's take what we've learned this morning uh, home with us and continue to press on in godliness. And let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you again, and Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for all that it tells to us. And Lord, we ask that you would help us this week to live godly lives before you. Uh, be with the, those again that couldn't be here with us. Uh, go with us and help us to uh, spread the gospel wherever we find ourselves. And Lord, we pray that where we've sinned against you, you'd forgive us. And that you'd keep us safe until Christ's day. And it's in his holy name we pray all this. Amen.